4 or 5, 4 or 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I definitely miss you guys this morning. Actually missed you guys yesterday. And I do miss you guys when I'm traveling, but this is something that I have to do. I have to travel because this is part of the mandate. And so I want to say thank you, Pastor Q Walker. It's good to see you. I hope that you are well and your family. Hope you're doing your assignment. Yeah. To each and every one of you who are going to log on. Brina, Brina Taylor is going up the timeline. God bless you. How you doing? It's good to see you. God bless you to my husband. He is getting ready for Bible study. Apostle Fred D. Gooden the third. It's such an honor to share this wonderful life with you. Markeisha Williams is going up the timeline. And Tony in 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 Tony uh inverse is going up the timeline. If I'm saying it wrong, please forgive me. We'll just call you Antonia I. God bless you, Miss Blaine or Mr. Blaine. I, Nitha Blaines, I'm assuming that's a female. Kobe Jackson, good to see you. Kim Moore, good to see you. Sandra Missy Hazel is going up the timeline. Laquita Smith, God bless you. Ashika Robertson. Golda, it is good to see you. I've been praying for you. Thank God for Minister Shen Kilton going up the timeline. Renee G. Shepard is going up the timeline. Tamira Robinson, how is your foot doing? It's good to see you. Tawana Stanley. Sharita Allen, good to see you. Erica Page. Vera Smalls. Karen Anderson is going up the timeline. Doris Settles is going up the timeline. Tanya Yvette Dobson, good to see you. Mother Cece, it's good to see you. God bless you all to all of you. Patina Sharp is going up the timeline. Valerie is going up the timeline. It's good to see you all. Ashika, it's good to see everyone. And if you're catching me on here, it means that you have set your notification. Good afternoon, Minister Stefanetta Wedding Wethington. I thank you so much for what you're doing for the Solace Ministry. Mary is going up the timeline. It's good to see you to each and every one of you. It is such an honor. I am going to be quick, fast, in a hurry because... I travel. That's what I do. But I guarantee you tonight is Bible study and it is going down at unity because my husband definitely has a word for the house. I need you guys Sunday. I know it's the holiday weekend and it is the 4th of July. For those of you who celebrate, I celebrate Juneteenth. However, to those of you who will be in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, if you're visiting or if you're in the house and you have a guest, be my guest, bring a guest, but I need you to be in the house. Jaleesa, it's good to see you. First Lady Plater, it is such an honor to see you in wonderful Texas. Good to see you all. If you're looking at me and I'm looking at you, we thank God for you. Um, almost 400 people who under the sound of my voice, it's good to see you. Um, Sharika Spells, it's good to see you. CY Wells, it's good to see you. God bless you. You're beautiful too, Yvette Simmons. And so if you're logging on here, this means that you have gotten an opportunity to hear what I have to say, because I have to say something to you. I'm going to tell you a story, and I always speak about the examples that were before me, before I became who I am to the nation, to the world, and maybe some of you. Um, thank you so much, Atika. I'm doing wonderful. And so I always speak about my mother and the experiences that I've got from my mother that allow me to evolve into full-fledged womanhood. I want to talk to you really quickly about something. I want to talk to you about confidence. I want to speak to you about confidence because sometimes what happens with women all over the world, we lose confidence. I speak about my mother and the reason why I have to talk to you about confidence is because I saw what confidence did when it was pulled away from an individual that I held dear, my mom. I remember growing up as a little girl in Brooklyn, New York, 450 Clinton Avenue between Gates and Green. That's where the birth be at. I never will forget my mother, and this is my experience. My mother, I grew up in a home of domestic violence. I grew up in a home where my mother, I can't wait to come to you, Apostle Boone. I'll be coming to you next week. I never will forget growing up and my mother, who was very, very beautiful. My mother was very petite. Her name was Valetta. That was my mother's, that's her name, Valetta. My mother was very petite and she was very studious. She was in education. She held her own. She had her own car. She had her own apartment. She moved from Fairmont, West Virginia to Brooklyn, New York to build a life for herself. Her other siblings came along with her. Her friends followed her because she had this posture and this vivaciousness. And she had something that we all love called confidence. But something happened over the course of time to my mother's confidence. I saw a woman who was very statuous and beautiful and someone that was very confident. Over the course of time with situations and over the course of time with circumstances, her confidence began to fizzle. 
her confidence began to fizzle. And unfortunately, she lost a lot of herself. She lost a lot of herself because she began to raise her children. And we are so honored for her to do that. She lost a bit of herself because unfortunately, her story and my story is she married my dad, who was an abuser. Not only that, she began to take the blows of so many different hits in life that caused a very confident woman whose head was real high, who was, might I say, a serious dresser, she let herself go. I'm saying this because you don't, I don't care who you are. Life is going to happen. You're going to have children. You're going to get in relationships. But one of the things that I'm here to remind you of is don't let anyone take away the only thing that you know, your confidence. Confidence is very imperative for you to have to learn how to move forward in any opposition. And not just women who are on here. There are some men that you're in something and someone took away your confidence, even your ability to be a man or your manhood or strip you of that. What I'm going to say to you is I'm going to give you a homework assignment and I'm going to ask you a question. Oh, you guys are crying. I don't mean to make you cry, but sometimes the purging is really good. So if you're going to cry, just do that. Here's an assignment for you. The assignment that I have for you is I want you to write down what took away your confidence. Some of the greatest heartbreaks that you could ever experience in your life took away your heart, took away your confidence. Now, oh gosh, someone said, my Lord, you're speaking to me. Um, Kimia, Amos, okay, then, then maybe I am. All right. I want you to write down what took away your confidence. I say this all the time and a lot of people may not think like me and it's okay because my thought process is kind of warped in its thinking. That's I just think outside of the box because you can't really put me in one. But but here's the thing. The greatest heartbreak in your life can come from a relationship. But one of the greatest heartbreaks you could ever experience is from a child. So I need you to identify what broke your heart. What broke your heart to save your life? We thank God because it happened and had it not happened, you probably wouldn't have moved forward and develop a sense of confidence that you lost in that last situation. But what took your confidence? It is very imperative that you write down and identify what stole your confidence in the first place. Now, someone was bold enough to say the struggle took away my confidence. Someone said, Derek Robertson, confirmation. Wow, wow. We just asked God, how do we move? Well, okay, let's do this. Begin to write down what took that, what took away your confidence. Was it a relationship? Was it your children? Did you know your children can take away your confidence, especially if you pride yourself as being a good parent? What took away your confidence? Was it the fact that you held a position or you held a job and unfortunately you got demoted because of the pandemic? What took away your confidence? Was it some sickness that you were enduring and we are praying for all of you? You have to identify what took away your confidence. Did something take away your confidence that you don't have the ability to be sexy or whatever it is that you find yourself struggling with? It is very imperative that you write down what took your confidence. What took it? Or did you hand your confidence over to avoid a fight and to get peace? Did you know that there are a lot of women all over the world and men too, that you're in a relationship and instead of it being combustible and combative, what you do is you hunker down and you say, I'm just going to give up and I'm not going to fight anymore. And I'm going to give you what you need so that we can have peace in the house. Oh, wow. Okay. You're crying again. All right. You're crying. You guys are crying a lot today. You guys are going to, you're going to be okay. I promise you're going to be okay. Someone said, unfortunately, Bettina said, my 17-year-old son being killed took away her confidence. Someone said that they lost a loved one. It took away her confidence. Someone said, someone unfortunately violated me. They said it took away their confidence. You have to identify, and I'm sorry, all of those things happened to each and every one of you. Someone said, my children took away my confidence. Someone said accidents that affected my health took away my confidence. Someone said the death of so many loved ones took away my confidence. You see how I ask you, 
I said, write those things down and you did it. I applaud you for your boldness. But in your quiet time, I need you to ponder, that's the word, ponder, on what took away your confidence. And when did you allow it to take place? Watch this. The reason why I say, when did you allow it to take place? Because some things happen that cause a level of trauma or traumatic situation, but it doesn't hit you too much later. Watch this. You see, my mother passed away over 20 something years ago. And even though I stood over her body and I said, mommy, I trust God and I trust God to get me through it. I confidently begin to metamorphose myself to live without her, but it didn't hit me to much time later. It did not hit me until I realized or came to the realization that I had no choice but to move forward when I hit hard times. Watch this. See, after going through losing my mother and then a traumatic divorce, I realized the trauma of losing my mother didn't hit me until I was standing in divorce court with children. See, you have to understand, someone said my disability, you have to identify what took away your confidence and what triggered your confidence to dwindle down in the first place. When you lose your confidence, I'm trying to help you understand something. You lose your confidence over the course of time. It's one traumatic situation that pulls away your strength over the course of time. Someone said, unfortunately, I was dealing with breast cancer. I thank God because if you're looking at me and I'm looking at you, it means that you're a survivor. So I applaud you. Confidence dwindles over the course of time based upon every situation that hits you and sometimes not simultaneously. It happens at a drip. For instance, there's one situation that you've identified, right? That's a drip in the bucket. Then another situation happens. It's a drip in the bucket. And over the course of time, every drip in the bucket causes something to be combustible and you break down because you can't take a hit anymore. You can't take it anymore because you say to yourself, the strength that I had to hold one situation, I don't have a strength or the strength to hold it all. And so what you do is you got to find a reason to fight. You have to ask yourself, and so many people that are putting up the timeline, my children took away my confidence. Let me ask you a wonderful question that you did not think about, Evie. What age are they? Are you allowing grown children to take away your confidence because they can't get their way? Are you allowing children to become so manipulative until you break down and you exhaust yourself or you overcompensate because one parent isn't there and it takes all the strength you got? Well, well, here's the thing. There comes a time where you have to, and I'm saying this because I'm, I'm going through this and this is my experience. It comes a time in your life that you have to realize that your children become grown and they make their own life choices. Their life choices has nothing to do with what you taught them because they're individuals. They no longer are individuals when they become over the age of 18. And so even though you try, let your lessons speak when life is trying to teach them something that you try to gracefully teach them. Sometimes the greatest thing you could do as a parent is to let go of a child and let them learn their life lessons and then come back to you and you won't say, I told you so. You let life tell them that. Some of the greatest things in the world that you can experience, the heartbreak is from people that you love. Somebody said something so profound and I'm going to share this with you. People who really love you never leave. Those that don't love you, they're the first to abandon you. Why? Because they don't have a use for you anymore. You have to ask yourself a question. Whoever used you, abused you, or didn't handle you right, they were not worthy of your love in the first place. And so some of you just need to be excited and thank God that they no longer can do these things to you, for you, or against you. Watch this. You're in a marriage or you just existed or you're in a relationship. And it's not going too good for you. In fact, you're not happy. You realize your confidence is dwindling down. You have to ask yourself if your confidence is dwindling down, who caused the drops in the bucket? 
That means if you're in a relationship and someone is not speaking kindly to you, or someone is being very manipulative, or someone making you feel bad because you can't be intimate, or someone is making you feel bad because you just don't feel like it because you're not yourself. You have to be careful not to allow that situation specifically to cause you to doubt the sexy, beautiful person that you've always been. I'm just on a hiatus this time. There was something that I, I did, and I have a dog. Her name is Charlie. In fact, it's the family dog. But I never forget years ago, I used to have a Rockwaller. This is years ago. And I had this dog, and, and, and we had to train her. So what we had to do is they said, take your hand while she is a puppy and put her hand, your hand in her bowl. When she gets ready to eat, you take your hand, you put it in the bowl, and you pull it away. And you let the puppy know, I am in control. And that's how you train the puppy. You don't bite the hand that feeds you. We're learning, right? Do you know in any relationship that you're in, you've got to gain control by pulling back control, by not allowing them to manipulate you. That if you don't do what I say, I'm going to unfortunately bite the hand that feeds me. They're not, mm -mm, trust me. They do more harm in the bark than they do in the bite. You've got to trust the fact that you are the one in control because they need you before you need them. You're in control, correct? Sometimes you have to look at what caused your confidence to cause itself to be a drop in the bucket that caused the overflow. Well, what is the overflow? You don't smile anymore. You're not happy anymore. You don't dress up anymore. You don't love yourself anymore. You're not the bona fide diva you thought you was. Why? Because of a situation, because of a person, perhaps a place, or something. Ask yourself a question. Someone said, I'm preaching to you. Well, Denise hadn't. Let's do it. You need to find your confidence and find it fast. The reason why is because you're losing control and you can't afford to do that. You're losing control because you've given something control. You refuse to stand up for yourself. Standing up for yourself doesn't mean you have to take an act of something unseemingly. No, it simply means, no, you're not going to do this. And if I continue to allow you to do this, then it's not saying anything about you. It's saying something about me. Get your confidence back. Let me ask you a question. Do you know girls' night is very necessary sometimes? Sometimes it's necessary for you to go out with some guys or go out with some girls so that you can kind of not relive your youthful years, but remind yourself not of who you used to be, but the confidence that you allowed to slip through the cracks of life and pull a little bit of that back. And once you get a taste of that, you'll say, oh, this is good. I think I got to change some things. That's why it's very imperative for you to take inventory. I tell you that all the time. Take inventory of what took your confidence and get it back. Let me tell you something. Sometimes, oh, you guys are crying again. Oh, I want you to stop crying. But if you got to do, cry with faith. Someone says, I can't seem to get it back. If you cannot get it back, you have to write down why. Because once you can identify what took away your confidence, you'll get to the conclusion that this thing is the hindrance and how do I stop it to get your confidence back first you got to identify it then you have to ask yourself how good is the cost meaning what do you value yourself enough to pay the price of peace peace is very valuable sugar pay every penny it means sometimes you got to let go of things that don't value who you are. And I don't care who it is. Happiness is really a choice. Because there's some people that don't have half of the things that you have. And they're very happy. Happiness means that no matter what comes, I promise myself that I'm going to find myself in a better headspace. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you have gone to therapy? Me. In fact... I'm back in it. You know why? Because I need it. Sometimes instead of taking a whole lot of money or some money and buying bundles or I'm not saying that's what you all are doing or 
set up something for yourself that I can just sit down with a counselor and I can do a mental health check to see where am I mentally, never mind about everybody else, about me. I am going to do a mental health check for myself because I'm losing confidence in myself. You know you're losing confidence because you know good and well you're not the same. Here's another project. I love to give projects. Take a picture of yourself. I am saying, someone said, I'm sewing on this word right now. You can. All you go to go do is www.cardchronicles.org. You can do 27. Listen to me. I love to give people projects. Every day, I want you to start a media journal. What is that? A media journal, and people think that I love to take selfies, but it's not really the selfies. I'm going to get ready to give you a, a secret. I want you to click, tag, and share. I'm going to give you my secret. I do something called a mental um, health check through a media journal. A media journal is every day I need you to take a selfie. Take a selfie every day. Because pictures don't lie. They tell you the truth. You could think you're in a real good mood until you take a picture and you'll see sadness on your face. Because it captures the unseen. So the media journal is you take a picture of yourself and then compare it to the time that you were happy or a situation that calls you to be happy. Meaning this, if you snap a picture today and you label it, ah, it's what, it's June something. And you say, wow, I look good. Wow, I'm happy. Compare it to a picture a long time ago. And you'll see the process daily of what's causing your smile to dwindle down. Then think about the situation in the time or the present time you took the picture and what was going on around you. What was going on around you to capture that smile, that frown, or the sadness that you refuse to see? Stick around, kid. I can teach you a lot. It is very imperative that you get your confidence back because your confidence will take you to places that people never would have thought that you could be because you are in love with who? Me. You matter. I know your kids matter, your husband matter, and everything around you, but you do matter. You can't keep going on empty. Lord knows I had to tell myself that. That's why a lot of times y'all just ain't gonna see me on here, sugar, because I have to take care of me. Sometimes you have to do things that the doctor told you to do. You have to take care of your health. You have to do all the things. Sometimes you can be worried about other people until you forget about little old you. Your confidence can slip away from you if you're not careful. This video is to remind you, get it back. Okay, everyone had a broken heart. At some point in time, someone that you thought was going to love you long time broke your heart in a short time. I am saying it's okay. It is okay for your heart to be broken, but it is not okay for you to stay there. You might not have seen that person and who they really was at that time because you all caught up and you know sex will cloud your judgment every time. But in a couple of months, you'll be okay. But you know what dangerous is? The danger is staying at that place and letting them make you feel like you will never be loved again. That is not okay. It is not okay to say, I'm not lovable. It's not okay to make them make you feel like you've done something wrong and it just simply didn't work. Write that down. What took your confidence in the first place? Now you may leave, but you ain't gonna take my confidence with you. That never goes in the box. When you're breaking up, everything goes in the box except for your confidence. You need that to heal. I am saying to you all, please take inventory of what took your confidence in the first place and deal with it because you deserve to be happy, healthy, and whole. I keep telling you I'm not your typical pastor. I believe in holiness and holistic health. I believe in mind, body, and soul. All of it is supposed to be healed and God even believes the same way. If he says I can give you the strength to do all things to Christ who strengthens you, how about those of you that really don't know Christ? You still have the ability to have a level of confidence to fight for something that is so beautiful, life. 
And even if you don't feel like life is really good right now, stick around and see. It gets better. That's why we always say here at Car Chronicles, live, baby, live. It gets better. Stick around and you'll see it. I am telling you, you are so worthy of confidence. I don't care. Yeah, you're going through chemo. You've been through chemo. I get it. But you know you could go through chemo and still be the most beautiful, radiant person that ever walked the face of life. I know that to be true. You have to say to yourself, do I feel beautiful? Whether you're a man or not, there are some men and you are absolutely beautiful. Fred, you are absolutely beautiful, honey. There's sometimes you don't feel so beautiful and that's life. But it's not okay to stay there. Because life, unfortunately, doesn't turn out so great as we plan. But I know one thing. It can turn around if you get the confidence and say, I refuse to stay here. This time next year, I'm going to be better. I'm going to do better. And I'm going to heal and get my confidence back. Because this situation won't get the best of me. I'll get the best of the situation. Get your confidence back. This is just a reminder. I need you to do that. Get your confidence back. Go get you a serious makeover, baby. Do some stuff that you've never done before. I don't care if you didn't lose those pounds. Honey, you still are beautiful. Do something for you. Brothers, you know good and well. Brothers, you can get your confidence broken down too. Whatever you got to do to get it back. In healthy and moderation, do it. Confidence is an amazing thing. And don't you dare put it in a box for anybody. I love you. I'm going to do my best to see you guys tomorrow, depending on how I got to get on the road or not. I love you. Someone said, I want to see it on this. You can. It's a small seat of seven. www.carchronicles.org. And I want you to look in the mirror and bite and say, girl, I love you, baby. You fine. Even if nobody believes it. As long as you believe in yourself, you get your confidence back. You need it. All right. Bye. Ooh, ooh.